The method that we haven't really talked about yet is constraints. So if we select this controller and we select the cube, instead of parenting, we can parent constraint. So you can notice I selected them in the opposite direction. So when we are parenting, we select the child first and then the parent. When we're constraining, we select the driver first and then the object that's driven. So controller first, then the cube. And now to go to rigging uh, menu mode and in here, go to constraint. And here are all the different constraints we can choose. So one option is a parent constraint. With parent constraint, we are constraining both translation and the rotation. So what that means is that when we translate an object, the other one follows. And when we rotate this uh, object, the other one follows as well. And it follows uh, almost exactly the, how, how it would work when we have objects parented. However, the scale isn't going to be affected. Now, this was parent constraint. And you can notice when we're constraining two objects, a separate node, uh, the constraint node gets created. And if we want to remove uh, that constraint, we can delete this node. Now, another way of constraining is point constraint. When we're creating a point constraint, uh, only translation gets connected. If we try to rotate our controller, the cube isn't going to rotate with it. Now, if we want to do the opposite, if we want only rotation uh, to be connected, we can select controller, select cube, and go to constraint, orient, add. And now the rotation is being connected, but the translation isn't being connected. Okay, so just to uh, review, point constraint is for translation, orient constraint is for rotation, parent constraint is for both rotation and translation. Now, my question to you is, if let's say two objects are orient and point constraint to each other, and then other objects are parent constraint to each other, Will there be any difference? So if let's say a parent constrain this cube to this circle, and then with these two, I'm going to point, oh, I don't want to, I do want to maintain offset. I'm going to point and orient constraint. So this maintain offset, uh, if it's not on, then it will snap to wherever the position or the rotation of the other object is. So if we have maintain offset off, then it will keep the offset that already exists. So this cube is parent constrained to this circle. And this cube is point and orient constrained to this circle. So if we translate these two objects, these two circles, these cubes will follow them in exactly the same way. Now the question is, if I rotate these two circles, will these be following them the same way or different way? The one that's a uh, parent constraint, it's going to be behaving as if it's parented to this object. So if we rotate the circle, the cube will rotate around the axis of the circle. However, if we have two objects or in constraint to each other, they will each rotate around its, all, its own axis because that's how orient constraint, orient constraint just can, uh, connects the rotation. Now, the question is, what are the benefits of constraints to let's say parenting or direct connection? And uh, we already looked at one, which is that we can maintain offset with constraints. Another benefit would be that if you select a constraint node, you can see here, we have a weight of an object. And this weight can be turned on or off. So right now, or we can even do it in between weight. So right now it's one, we can turn it to zero. So if we now move the circle, it won't be following. But if we turn this to one, this weight to one, it will be following. So this can be useful if let's say in our rig, we want to uh, have a certain object follow the other, in which case we can turn on the constraint, but then let's say we want it to stop 
following, then we can have an attribute that will turn that follow off. Another benefit of constraints is that we can constrain an object in between multiple other objects. So let's say here we have these two NURPS uh, circles. I'll remove this parent constraint and I'm going to create a parent constraint by selecting three objects. So I'm selecting two circles and then this uh, cube object. I'm going to go constrain parent. And as a result, you can see this parent constraint got created, but now there are two objects listed here, NURPS circle one and NURPS circle three. So right now, it's going to be following these two circles exactly the same way. So if you want to have an object that is always in between the other two, you can do it through this type of constraints. So there we go. So it's almost like an accordion, but we can go further and we can decide how much is this cube offsetted in between to these two circles. For instance, we can favor circle one. So we can make it follow circle one by 0 0.75 and we can make it follow circle three by 0 0.25. So as a result, if we move it now, it's going to be following this one more than it follows this one. Another benefit to constraints is that we can combine that together with parenting. I'll parent this cube to this circle, but then I'll constrain it to this circle, constrain parent. Uh, which circle now do you think it will follow? So it will prioritize the object it's constrained to. So it will first try to follow the object it's constrained to, and then the parent. But if there is a constraint, the parent isn't going to be working. And we can uh, play around with it with our turning off of constraint weight the same way. So uh, we can now uh, select this apparent constraint. We have this weight here. If we turn it to zero, now it won't be following this circle, but it will be following the one that it's parented to. Let's say it wants uh, an object to sometimes follow one object, sometimes the other object. Uh, we can deal with it with parenting plus constraints. Uh, there are two other constraints we will be using. So there's aim constraint. Let's say, uh, let's work on this cube now. Let's select this controller, select this cube and go constrain aim. Now, if we are to move this controller around, the cube will be rotating in a way to always face this controller. Uh, oftentimes in the rig, you will have a controller kind of in front of the eyes. And if you move it, that's where the eyes look. So that's oftentimes very easy for animators to, to pose using a controller like that. Another constraint we'll be using is pole vector, uh, but we'll uh, talk about it more when we talk about IK and, and FK. So if this object is parented uh, to a circle, and we turn a circle off, then both of them will be turned off. Uh, however, here, it's if it's constrained to uh, this object and we are to turn off this object's visibility, this one will be uh, still visible. Another reason for constraints is that that way, it's easier to separate um, our controllers and our uh, joints in hierarchy or our mesh in hierarchy. For instance, this circle and this cube are parented to each other. So we can't really have separate, let's say, groups for them. But if they are not parented to each other, if they're constrained, then we can have a group for uh, these two cubes. We can call it mesh group. And we can have a group for controllers. And we can call it controllers group. And this way, everything is much uh, cleaner in the hierarchy. So our mesh is here. We can turn it off. We can turn it on if we want. Our controllers are here. Uh, so we can also deal with them however we want. So it just makes everything uh, a bit cleaner.